Use the means of today to reach the people of today. The Church Speaks, an episode where the Holy Father, the Pope, and the Bishops of the Philippines speaks about their apostolic letters and exhortations to all Catholic Christians. At the Weekly Angelus, Pope Francis calls us to reflect on the fact that the Son of God wanted to be in need of the warmth of a family like all children. This is why the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary and Joseph, can serve as a model in which all families of the world can find their sure point of reference and sure inspiration. A key note of the life of the family of Nazareth was joy. With Jesus surrounded by the maternal affection of Mary, and the care of Joseph, in whom Jesus was able to see God's tenderness. We too, said Pope Francis, are called to rediscover the educational value of the family unit. Families, he said, must be founded on the love that always regenerates relationships, opening up horizons of hope. The Pope emphasized the importance in the family of prayer, affection, forgiveness, tenderness, and adherence to the will of God. In this way, he said, the family opens itself to the joy that God gives to all those who know how to give joyfully. A happy home, he added, is also outgoing. It finds the spiritual energy to be open to the outside world, to others, to the service of brothers and sisters, in collaboration in building an ever new and better world, especially by the example of daily life. Pope Francis recognized that every family has its problems, and that at times, because we are human, because we are weak, we even fight within the family. I want to tell you one thing, the Pope said, if we fight in the family, never end the day without making peace. Once again, he recommended three words that should be common in every family. Please, thank you, and I'm sorry. If these three words are present in the family, he said, the family will be in good shape. We shall continue the Catechesis of the Holy Father in this episode. Oratio Imperata God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the coronavirus disease 2019 that has claimed lives and has affected many. We pray for your grace for the people tasked with studying the nature and cause of this virus and its disease and of stemming the tide of its transmission. Guide the hands and minds of medical experts that may minister to the sick with competence and compassion, government and private agencies that must find cure and solution to this pandemic. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. We also pray for all who died because of this disease. Grant us the grace to work for the good of all and to help those in need. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Mary, help of all Christians, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsud, pray for us. Saint Paul the Apostle, pray for us. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago Sr., Steve G. Santiago and Family, Stu and Nancy Santiago and Family, Stephen and Joy Santiago and Family, Sally Mae, Santiago Lim and Benedicto Lim Jr. and Family, Sunny Boy and Luella Santiago and Family. 
Alex P. Montañez and Family, Mercy Evangelista and Family, St. John Paul II College of Davao, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Family, Teresita Villa Abrile, T. Linao Trucking Services, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Mr. and Mrs. Potashio Takandong, Shardan, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Melvin E. Aviles, Coelans Food House, Brother Henley and Lolita Evangelista and Family, Mr. and Ms. Lucas B. Datoy and Family, Jess and Amelia Dyson, Gus and Sophie, Fel Yamido and Family, Adolfo and Malo Ato, Vivian Cam, APC, June and Beth Opos and Family. Offering of the Holy Mass Accept Most Holy Trinity, this sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word, and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Amen. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offers, and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially the sponsoring group. Mercy Evangelista and Family, St. John Paul II College of Davao, Jose B. Ong and Family, Violetto and Yvonne Carrido and Family, Engineer and Mrs. Ernesto Aguilar and Family, Tombo Family. Thanksgiving Intentions, Nida Tomalip, Anonymous, Vita Rivera Bookkeeping Services, June and Beth Opos and Family, Menchi Catalonia and Family, Salvador Family, Carol Velasquez, Maria Fe Magbanwa, Wilfredo Yap and Family, Mercedita Baguod, Ana Celia Marso and Family. Good Health, Lita Montalban and Linda Luga. Birthday Intentions, Kimber May Mamites, Esther Balmonte, Ana Mikanag, Fortune Castillo, Joy Alvarez, Flora Exala. Recovery and Healing of Linda Aguilar, Emil Sison, Pai Cadena, Regina Cispedes, Sheila Juarez, Arnel Famador, Linda Aguilar, and Linda Luga. For the eternal repose of Rodolfo, Bernardo, Milagros, Luciana, German, Erlinda, Claudio, Thelma, Marutas, Julio, Menandro, Sr., Anastasio, Filipa, Eduardo, Ernesto Sr., Manuel, Renerio Sr., Conrada, Domingo, Abraham Sr., Felisa Laudimer, Roberta, Marcelina, Elizabeth, Jessica, Feliciano, Lourdes, Francisco, Tranquilino, Nicolas, Cecilia, Ricardo, Jesusa, Luisa, Elpidio, Adelaida, Benito, Juanita, Juanito, Lilia, Huil, Norma, Gloria, Rosalie, Cleto, Monday, Jimmy, Sofia. And those who died of COVID-19, all the souls in purgatory, all the deceased members, benefactors, sponsors, and cooperators of the Pauline Media Mission. Prayer for the Sick Lord and Father, God without end and Almighty, through your grace you gave us strength and help in our weakness. In your mercy, touch your sick people. Deliver them from their sicknesses and restore their good health, so that assured of your goodness and love, they will praise and thank you in your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, today's feast reminds us that God loves all nations and cultures of the earth and that He communicates with us in many often unforeseen ways through internal inspirations, through external events, through people, and through His Word. Many times, 
These factors are combined in an interplay that becomes clear only in hindsight. The challenge is for us to decipher God's message and respond to it with faith, persevering generosity and courage, just as the Magi did. The presider of this Holy Mass is Father Nathaniel Ibanez, OSB, St. Benedict's Monastery, Kogon, Digo City. The choir during this Mass is the Benedictus Choral, St. Benedict's Monastery Chapel Choir, Kogon, Digo City. Let us joyfully celebrate the banquet of love. Please stand as we start the Holy Mass. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, that we may be worthy to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and beg the Lord for his pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in his 
shouts his name, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy. Gloria in excelsis Deo, glory to God in the highest, and on earth is the people of good will. For you are Lord and the Holy One, you are Lord, Father Lord, you are Lord, you are Lord and the Most High, Jesus Christ, Most High, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The prophet Isaiah spoke poetically of the glorious future which God had in store for Jerusalem. The church applies this eschatological vision to herself, the new Jerusalem, blessed by the presence in her of the incarnate Son of God, and which of all peoples of the world are invited to belong. The first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining regions. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall be drooped and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaris from Midian and Epa, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Yes. Thanks be to God.
to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. Today, St. Paul reminds us that with the coming of Christ, the barrier of estrangement between Jews and the Gentiles was shattered. Both were invited to form one single people of God under the headship of Jesus, the Savior of all. The second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit. Namely, that the mystery was made known to me, to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed. Towards his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. 
assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people. He inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, the solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord gives us this image of God Himself in the person of Jesus, in the infant Jesus revealing himself to the world. And here, when you think of the epiphany, we cannot but have this image in mind. There are three magi, some would say wise men, some would say kings, offering him homage, offering the, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ homage or giving him gifts or worshiping the Lord Jesus. And this image give, gives us this clear understanding that the salvation offered by God is not just to the people of Israel. The Magi represents the, the rest of the world, the rest of the nations of the world, and thus the offer of salvation is offered to all of humanity. Salvation is offered to each of us, to all of us, to every people on earth, not just to the people of Israel. This is a very clear image, and we praise and thank God for this wonderful gift of offer of salvation to us. And this brings us to another idea whereby when we think of epiphany, yes, we think of salvation. And when we think of salvation, here we are reminded that salvation is readily, now readily available for us. That means while living on earth, we can already experience being saved. And this will bring us to, to the third point, which is very, very important. Yes, Epiphany is telling us that God is offering the salvation to all of humanity, to all of us, and that this salvation is now readily available for each of us, whereby we can experience already this salvation even while living on earth. This is reminding us also of that third point, that requirement that the Epiphany is telling us, reminding us, inviting us. That requirement, that, that thing, that part that we have to do. Yes, salvation is really available, but we have to do our part for us to experience it, for us to, to experience being saved. Every now and then, we experience difficulties in life. Every now and then, we are facing problems, troubles, pressures, tensions in our day-to-day -day living. But with this message of salvation, we are reminded 
that even amidst the most trying moments in life, we can already experience joy and peace. That even amidst the big problems life brings us, we can live life with, with no pressure at all, with no tension at all, with nothing to worry about. This is the message of salvation. But we have to do our part. Salvation requires one thing of us for us to ex already experience it while living on earth. And what is that? In Greek, there is this word metanoia. And the word metanoia simply means complete change of heart. Is there something to be changed in our hearts? Is there something to be changed? Is there something to be changed? Yes, there is. Because when man was driven away from paradise, yes, he was living life, not for himself, but he, when he was driven, driven away from paradise, man started to be selfish, to do things for his own. And this is one thing that we have to change. From selfishness to selflessness. Metanoia, complete change of heart, simply means selflessness. That we learn to live our life not for ourselves, but for others. Epiphany reminds us that we are men and women for others. In that sense, every action that we do, ev everything, every step that we do, is always towards the happiness, the peace, the good of the people surrounding us. Not just for our very own selves. We do things not for our own good, but we do things for the good of others. And this is the call of metanoia. If you are to look at ourselves now, with all your honesty, ask yourself, am I selfless? Or are there still some aspects of me in which I am doing things because I want to benefit from them, first and foremost, because of selfishness. This is easier said than done. That is why metanoia requires that skill of introspection, something which is lacking in, in many or in most people today. Introspection, that is to look at how we have lived our lives to assess and reassess our thoughts, our words, our deeds in the past minutes, the past hours, the past times. And to evaluate it. Here we need God's grace for us to really see ourselves and to realize our own selfishness. And the moment we see the details of ourselves, realize our own selfishness, now there is this call to change, to make that selfish part of us selfless, to make that selfishness of ourselves selfless. Easier said than done, as we said early on. That is why we always need the grace of God. And this Eucharist, in the, in, in the infant Jesus, we ask for that grace, that grace to really be able to introspect, that grace to really realize our own selfishness, and that grace to be energetic, enthusiastic, to change that part of us, or that's, that part of ourselves, from being selfish to really selfless. I was once attending a wedding reception and in that reception the father of the groom was asked to speak for the newlywed and his message was very very brief and he said to them be faithful to the ten commandments and everything will be well that was what he said that message is true not just to the newlywed couple but to all of us in this time of celebrating the solemnity of the epiphany of the Lord, 
here we are reminded about fidelity. Fidelity to the commandments. Because fidelity to the Lord, to His commandments, will always lead us to selflessness. Always lead, lead us to metanoia. And when we have embraced metanoia ourselves, by then, we will experience salvation, even while on earth. And experiencing salvation would mean having that peace deep within us and even joy deep within us, even amidst the most difficult moments in life, even amidst the most trying moments in life, even when we're facing the most, uh, the biggest problem we have so far in this world. We will remain at peace. We will remain joyful. We will remain always it within us having that submissive uh, attitude to God's abiding presence, knowing and believing that He will put things into place. And this experience of salvation we may have, we will have on earth, will have find its fulfillment when one day we will be welcomed in heaven. And so we reflect on this on ourselves. Metanoia, change of heart. Is there still some part of me or aspects of myself that I have to change? Again, in this Eucharist, we seek God's grace and pray for the gift of uh, enlightenment and guidance that we may acquire that skill of introspection, self-introspection, assess and reassess ourselves, and then have that enthusiasm, energy to change ourselves, embrace metanoia, and experience salvation while on earth, and fully experience it when we are welcomed in heaven soon. To God be the glory. our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, before all ages, the God from God, right from God, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. Encouraged by the example of the Magi, we present our gifts and petitions to the Lord as we say, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the church, the new Jerusalem, to which the Lord calls all the peoples of the world, may she always be a resplendent sign of God's universal love. Let us pray. For the Holy Father and all other spiritual leaders, may their teaching and example be like bright stars that lead people to Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, us. For our missionaries who strive to bring the light of the Christian faith to those who do not know it, May they succeed in integrating the gospel values with the local cultures. 
Let us pray. For all Filipinos who are called to be a people on mission to the nations, may we be credible evangelizers in words and deeds. Let us pray. For each one of us gathered here, may we always follow the guidance of God's word as proclaimed by the church. Let us pray. For all the aged, the sick, and the persons with disabilities, that they may be hopeful always because God cares for all. Let us pray. For all the deceased brothers and sisters, may they be admitted to the joys of eternal life in heaven, especially the victims of COVID-19, the deceased members of the sponsors, benefactors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Media Mission, through the mercy of God and the intercession of all the saints. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus, like Jerusalem, we rise up in splendor because your light has come. May our behavior become like a star that leads others to you, who live and shine forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that these, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of the same, for our good and good of all His holy church. Lord, with favor, we pray on these gifts of your church, in which you are offered now, not gold or frankincense or mere, but we who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Yes. 
the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them that the dew falls, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope with romulo and george our bishops and all the clergy remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of their resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. They say this command and forms of a divine teaching we dare to say. Our Father,
us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace to the Lord. and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. who cannot receive Holy Communion, we pray the spiritual communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me, I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now, you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart. Detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, I love you above all things, because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen. When Christ was born, pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection 
the mystery in which you have willed us to participate. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Responding to suffering in and around us, all will be well, offers help, healing, and hope during difficult times by sharing some wisdoms of some of our wonderful saints. This book is available at the Pauline's Media Center, Bolton Street, Dabao City, Philippines, at 65 pesos per copy. The Lord be with you. And, with your and may the Almighty God bless God and protect you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Joy to the world, joy to the world, joy, 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 sing to the Lord and all rejoice, sing to the Lord and all rejoice, joy to the world as Lord is Good time is good time is good.